this meeting is being audio and video recorded for the recordings of the non-confidential part, of which there are none, for the meeting will be made available on the internet. No other persons are permitted to record the meeting unless specifically authorised by the Council to do so. That's the speakers. And we just ask uh, those present to turn off their mobile phones. Um, apologies and leave of absence, obviously there are none. Uh, disclosures of interest. Uh, my disclosures relates to item number 10.21. I have a non-pecuniary non and non-significant interest in the, in the report that talks to your high street application. Uh, my wife is the Vice President of the Chamber of Commerce and Council is collaborating with on the grant application. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, that's going to come to me, I think. Uh, there's no public forum. Um, confirmation of the minutes of the meeting of the Council held on 25 November. Um, I would move that the minutes of the meeting of Council held on 25 November 2020 be adopted subject to the minutes being noted that the interim administrator invited Mr. Joshua Fiddler, a representative from the um, Special Rate Variation Protest Group from Gaira, to speak before the close of the meeting. Um, I would declare those uh, minutes carried. Um, we next move on to interim administrator minutes, um, and I have three, and I'll have one to finish up the meeting as well. Um, the first one, uh, relates to the EDRs Part 4. Um, when considering a report at the September meeting in relation to infrastructure at EDRs Part 4 in Gaira, Council resolved, amongst other things, to commission an independent report that addresses the following issues. One, the provision of water to the Costa Group in the years 1990, 1919 and 1920. Two, the circumstances surrounding the request from Council to the Costa Group to fund the construction of the public infrastructure at Izziard Park. Three, details of any and all memoranda of understanding between Council and the Costa Group, including draft MOUs, meetings and negotiations. Four, the relationship between Council, including Councillors and staff, and the Costa Group. Um, a report was commissioned uh, that was prepared by Mr Todd Hopwood of Wollongong City Council who had earlier completed a secondment to review uh, the Council's governance arrangements. Mr Hopwood's report was received yesterday and I publicly make it available through this minute and it will be on the Council uh, website. Generally the report finds that as the relevant water utility, Underdale Regional Council completed uh, all of its legal obligations. Uh, however, however, the report um, makes four recommendations. Recommendation one, that the report be made public to give the community transparency and confidence in the actions taken by council staff, that they have acted in the best interest of the community and provided effective management of water supplies and security for the Gaira area and the Armadale region more generally. Two, Council review its approach to community engagement and stakeholder management with particular reference to subject matters that have significant and divergent factors that Council must consider in determining the best outcomes for the community overall. This is essential to ensure that Council appropriately demonstrates its decision-making methodology and how it's achieving best value overall for the community in its decision-making. Recommendation three, that Council consider providing updated training to all staff on the requirements of the State Records Act 1998 and the importance of prompt and accurate retention of all records that relate to the decision or action of Council and Council's record management system. And rec recommendation four from Mr Hopwood, that Council consider the uh, proactive release of any relevant materials referenced or identified in his report 
in accordance with Section 7 of the Government Information Public uh, Access Act if it believes that such releases would improve community understanding of the Council's actions in this matter or add to community confidence in the decision making of the Council. Uh, accordingly, I would move uh, that the report be received and the recommendations contained therein be referred to the General Manager uh, for consideration and report to Council and would declare that carried. Uh, my second uh, minute uh, relates to memorandums of understanding or MOUs with the Council. At the August meeting of the Council, consideration was given to the allocation of funds to support community groups and community wellbeing initiatives. At the time it was resolved, amongst other things, that the partnership agreements be put in place to improve the transparency and accountability in the use of public funds. I'm advised by the Acting General Manager that work has commenced on this report um, and a report to Council in this regard will be presented uh, in the near year. In my short time at the Council, it's become apparent that there are a large number of, large number of MOUs, not only covering the allocation of financial support, but other areas including in-kind support. Many of the MOUs appear to have been completed without formal reference to the Council, and in my view are unordered. The matter needs to be addressed as expectations of some may not be delivered under the current arrangement and will not meet the expectations of the Minister for Local Government Performance Improvement Order. Accordingly, I would move that the status, intent and mutual obligations of all MOUs prepared um, in Armidale Regional Council since the 2016 merger where the draft or completed be reported to Council for direction and would declare that carried. Uh, the next minute um, relates uh, to a performance order. On the 20th of November this year, the Minister for Local Government gave Council notice of her intention to issue a performance improvement order on Armidale Regional Council and gave Council seven days to make a submission. I reported this matter to Council on 25 November, welcoming the Minister's intentions and outlining my reasons which were conveyed to the Minister within the time specified. Noting the Council's submission, the Minister has today served a performance improvement order on Council, which I now table and will ensure it will be placed on the Council's website without delay. The performance order requires the appointment of a special advisor and a financial controller who will be in place until the September election and is named as Mr John Rayner. The Minister also forwarded a letter to Mr Rayner and myself noting that in deciding to issue the order, she has given particular attention, uh, she has given particular regard to the need to ensure that the improvements made under administration continue when the elected body returns from the suspension period, that is on Friday. Accordingly, I would move the contents of the performance improvement order given by the Minister for Local Government and to take effect from 9 December 2020 be noted and I'll declare that carried. Uh, we now move on to the general business uh, of the Council, General Manager. First item 8.1, awards of risk. Thank you, Commissioner of Interim Local Administrator. The purpose of this report is to seek council endorsement for amendments to the Audit Risk and Improvement Committee Charter, which include amending the number of independent voting members from five to three, amending the numbers required for each committee quorum, removal of two paragraphs in section 3.5 regarding the dismissal of committee members or chair, and amendments to reflect administrative corrections to spelling and format. All of these amendments reflect recommendations by the Office of Local Government in the Risk Planning Plan and in the General Audit Framework Discussion Paper Thank published you. in support of the Local Government Memorandum. Uh, thank you for that. Um, in relation to item 8.1 on page 4 of the business paper, I would move the Office's recommendation A, B, C and D and declare that carried. Um, item 8.2.
Thank you, Mr. Interim Administrator. The purpose of this report is to pres present to the community and to council the, inter the first quarter progress report on the operational plan 2020-2021. Uh, thank you. Uh, in relation to item 8.2 on page 7 of this paper, uh, I would move the officer's recommendation and declare that carried. Interim Administrator, the purpose of this report is to seek council endorsement of the risk management policy uh, to revoke policy poll 230 enterprise risk management. It should be noted that one late submission was received regarding the risk management policy uh, after it concluded its 28 day execution period. However, the feedback received related to climate change associated risks, which are addressed in other unveiled regional council frameworks and plans. In relation to item 8.3 on page 11 of this paper, I would move the officer's recommendation A and B to be adopted and declare that carried. Um, item 8.4, delegation of authority to the general manager. Thank you, Mr. Interim Administrator. I would like to change the uh, recommendation. This report uh, outlines a delegation to the incoming general manager. Uh, it's the same as the one that's currently in place and the proposed instrument of delegation is attached uh, to this report. The one that's been attached to this report is replaced by the one that has been issued late this morning. So the attachment to this report uh, has been replaced by the attachment which is on page 165 of the attached list of orders today and I will change my recommendation to read the council delegates functions to the general manager as described in the instrument of delegation issued 9th of September as an attachment to page 165 pursuant to section 377 of the Regulation of Government Act of 1980. So the, the extra matter relates to the delegation undertaken that can't be undertaken under delegation as the interim councillor has just gone through. Correct. Thank you very much. Uh, in relation to item 8.4 on page 13 of the business paper, uh, I would move the, the amended recommendation um, of the uh, acting general manager on the screen and declare that carried. Next item is uh, Audit Risk and Improvement Committee, item 8.5. Thank you, Mr. Interim Administrator. Uh, this report recommends the appointment of three independent members to the Audit Risk and Improvement Committee uh, to also appoint the chair as part of that process, to thank the previous serving committee members and to endorse a remuneration fee payable to the committee members. Um, this has uh, resulted from a public expression of interest process. Uh, thank you. Um, in relation to this matter, the workload on this committee is going to be substantial, uh, having regard to the Minister's order uh, and also matters that have been referred already by Council for overview by, the, um, by this committee. Accordingly, in relation to item 8.5 on page 16 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation A, B, C and D and declare that carried. Um, code of uh, meeting practice um, and associated with workshops, item 8.6. Mr. Interim Administrator, this report uh, responds to two matters included in the Minister for Local Government's Performance Improvement Order. Firstly, in relation to pre meeting briefings, they now, it's proposed, don't have to. Uh, be subject to a majority of councillors' request. And secondly, proposals are included to open workshops to the public. Um, the report that you have before you has been updated from the original report which was published last Friday. Uh, the original report uh, had some matters in regard to the proposed clause 2112 that have been amended in this report. Thank you. Um, 
this is a uh, complex matter. Um, the, the council has taken the workshop and briefing uh, direction uh, and the, as the Acting General Manager says, the, uh, the Minister raises in her improvement order the very matter that I raised at the last meeting, that is the corporate body uh, taking decisions at workshops, uh, not in, uh, in, in count or appearing to, uh, and not in uh, uh, council meetings. Um, the, there is actually a way out of this for the, the council, as we've, we've discussed, and that is to have standing committees if they don't want the formality uh, of dealing with these matters in council meetings. Uh, but if the council wants to have workshops, uh, the Minister's Improvement Order says that we've got to make sure uh, that it's open, transparent. Um, so this recommendation has been changed substantially um, and I really don't see there's any service in me reading it all. Um, but what, what, what it does in effect um, is, as uh, Mr Rain has said, um, it addresses the, the question of not having a majority of people wanting a workshop, um, but importantly, um, the workshop um, notes being taken of what's happening in workshops uh, and then being reported to the first available council meeting and emphasising that decisions uh, can't be taken in workshops and reminding the council's uh, the council laws uh, the ones returning and, and the ones uh, who may be elected uh, in September next year, um, of the importance of uh, independence of reporting by the council staff. Um, so I think that takes account of, of all the matters really in the, in, in the, um, the alterations. Um, there is one um, ad ad additional um, thing that um, I wanted in this, and that is that until this is all uh, formalised, the council not hold. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, in number F, uh, note that accepting any workshop or briefing deemed, necess deemed necessary by the special advisor or financial controller directly relating to the Minister's performance order, no workshop or briefing be held until the amended code of meeting practice is formalised. And I think that's um, uh, an important uh, matter uh, that is, is addressed. So in relation to item uh, 8.6 on page 19 of the business paper, um, I would move uh, the recommendation that has been shown um, on, the, on the screen. Uh, and would declare that carried. It was, it's rather a complex matter, but I'm confident we've, we've got it covered in accordance with the performance order. Uh, next item is um, Armidale Regional Airport Airside Works, Stage 1, item 9.1. Thank you, <coughs> Mr Interim Administrator. This is a report to make Council aware of the project scope uh, the funding sources and the delivery schedule of Armadale Airport Airside Works Stage 1. The report uh, outlines the five sub-projects sub and, as I say, the source of funding and the, uh, and the delivery timetable of the projects up there. Uh, thank you very much. In relation to item 9.1 on page 24 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation and declare that carried. Uh, next item is... Uh, delegations and criteria for the sale of land at Armadale Business Park. Thank you, Mr Administrator. This is in reference to the Armadale Airside Business Park and the purpose is to expedite commercial decisions um, and the Armadale Airside Business Park of the Armadale Airside Business Park lot sales. It's proposed that Council delegates to the General Manager authority to approve contracts of sale for lots uh, based on agreed economic development and commercial assessment criteria determined by Council and in accordance with growing local economic uh, grant guidelines. Uh, thank you. Look, I've changed this recommendation substantially, um, having regard to the council.
Council's obligations under the uh, performance order uh, and to ensure um, openness and transparency and potential political interference uh, in, in this process. Um, accordingly, um, I would move uh, a new recommendation, A, that Council authorise the General Manager to obtain quotations and negotiate land sales within 5% of the land valuations of the Armidale Airside Business Park. Sales greater than 5% below valuation will require approval of the Council. B, authorise the General Manager to, negotiate, to renegotiate the, the appointment of Armidale First National Real Estate um, Proprietary Limited as selling agent in terms consistent with AFN's compliance with Council's statement of business ethics when acting for and on behalf of the Council, uh, uh, evidenced uh, by a deed between the parties. C. Authorise the General Manager to sign the necessary legal documents in relation to the land sale. D. Note that any land sales or leases will require the approval of the financial controller with the subject of Council resolution or delegation. And E. Uh, note the net proceeds from the sale or lease of land will be placed in a reserve until a strategy from the proceeds of property uh, sales and leases is adopted. And I would declare that carried. Next item um, is updated financial statements uh, 9.3. I think this matter is replaced in the supplementary agenda. Uh, thank you. And that is through no fault of the council officers? Yes. It's the requirements of the auditors? That's correct. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, item 10.1, fixing country roads, um, on page 33. Thank you, Mr. Interim Administrator. Um, this pro uh, the purpose of this report is to seek Council's endorsement for a funding application to think, fix uh, for under the Fixing Country Roads uh, program. Uh, the project, the application is for five projects, being across four key areas. Uh, the uh, Gyra Sale Yards, which will include bitumen sealing between the New England Highway and the Sale Yards, plus an internal ring road to improve safety. The Armadale Sale Yards, which will e include bitumen sealing between Urala Road and the Sale, Sale Yards, plus an internal ring road. Uh, two projects at Lagoon Road Quarry, uh, which will include bitumen sealing from the New England Highway to the quarry, uh, comprising of sealing 1.5 kilometres of gravel and upgrading 9.1 kilometres of sealed section to that is currently very narrow. And the final project is uh, on Gyra Road West, which is bitumen sealing between the New England Highway and Sandy Creek Bridge. And I would also request that this additional detail is included in the minutes. Uh, thanks very much for that. The 1.5 Lagoon Road, um, this section that's not surfaced at the moment, this is the area that the residents of Black Mountain have been particularly concerned about because it's been promised since the 2016 merger? That's correct. Uh, thank you. Um, in relation to uh, item 10.1 on page 33 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation A and B and declare that carried. Uh, and request that the extra advice be incorporated into the minutes. Thank you. Uh, the next item is uh, critical state infrastructure, uh, oven mountain pumped hydro project. Thank you, Mr. Administrator. Uh, the purpose of this report is to notify Council that the Minister for Planning and Public Spaces, the Honourable Rob Stokes, has declared the oven mountain pumped hydro storage project to be a critical state significant infrastructure under section 5.13 of the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act. Uh, thank you very much. In relation to item 10.2 on page 36 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation and declare that carried. Uh, item 10.3, uh, saving our species, I iconic uh, koala project. 
Thank you, Mr. Interim Administrator. The purpose of this report is to pro provide information on the Saving Our Species Iconic Koala Project to Council and to seek, in, in, to seek approval to endorse the joint partnership and to de delegate authority to the General Manager to sign the partnership agreement. Uh, thank you. In relation to item 10.3 on page 38 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation A, B, C and D and declare that carried. Uh, item uh, 10.4, uh, Environmental Trust Restoration and Re Rehabilitation Grants. Thank you, Mr Interim Administrator. The purpose of this report is to seek Council's approval to support the development and submission of a funding application by the Southern New England Land Care for a project to enhance water quality at Gyra Dam, including, if successful, the provision of fencing and stock water points that will, will in the first instance, be sought from the grant or otherwise be funded from Council's water fund. Uh, thank you very much. In relation to item 10.4 on page 41 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation A, B and C and declare that carried. Um, item uh, 10.5, uh, transfer of Crown land at Wollamombi. Thank you, Mr Administrator. Uh, this report is seeking approval um, for the transfer of Crown Land Public Road called Night Saw Laneway in Wollamumbi. Uh, the approval is sought for Council to also to be appointed as Crown Land Manager over the Archery Reserve at 95 Rockvale Road, Armidale, to improve the environmental protection of the reserve. In relation to this matter, um, I'm leaving C in um, so the Council can give consideration but you know, 6000 is a lot of money when I mean, the council uh, isn't spending enough money on roads. Um, but anyhow, that's be up for the incoming council and the uh, finance controller to deal with. In relation to item 10.5 on page 45 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation A, B and C and declare that carried. Um, response to the Aboriginal land claim, item 10.6. Thank you, Mr. Interim Administrator. The purpose of this report is uh, for Council to endorse a submission as attached to the report to the Department of Planning, Industry and Environment in relation to the Aboriginal land claim. Uh, thank you. In relation to item 10.6 on page 48 of the business paper, I would move the op officer's recommendation A and B uh, and declare that carried. Um, next item. Uh, is continuation of Level 3 water restrictions, uh, item 10.7 on page 50 of the business paper. Uh, thank you, Mr Administrator. Um, council staff are seeking endorsement uh, that Level 3 water restrictions continue. Uh, council staff make the recommendation that on the basis of uh, the condition of the water storages, consumption and the Bureau of Meteorology outlook. Uh, considering all those factors, Level 3 is recommended for, uh, for the future. Uh, thank you very much. Um, in relation to item 10.7 on page 50 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation and declare that carried. Uh, next item, uh, policy for keeping of animals in urban areas, item 10.8. Uh, Mr Administrator, the purpose of this report is to place the existing keeping of animals policy, poll 063, on public exhibition the policy aims to maintain residential amenity and minimise the nuisance effects associated with keeping the keeping of animals in urban areas. Uh, thank you. In relation to item 10.8 on page 52 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation A and B and declare that uh, carried. Uh, next item uh, is acknowledging of funding uh, at Martin's Gully in particular. Um, on page 54 of the business paper. Thank you, Mr Interim Administrator. The purpose of this report is uh, to inform Council that we have been successful in a funding application for the Martins Gully Shambrook Avenue Bridge Renewal Project for a total of $750,000. Thank you. Um, in relation to uh, item 10.9 on page 54 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation and declare that carried. 
um, project 030 update, item 10.10. .10. Mr. Administrator, this is, um, uh, this is to receive and note the report for the uh, project 030 and also authorise the general manager to make appointments to the project zero board and committees as required. Uh, thank you. Look, I'm going to add a, a C to this uh, recommendation. To me, there appears to be a number of environmental groups um, um, working within the council. Uh, we have this group, there's the ARC Eco group, uh, there's a climate emergency group, uh, and to service all these groups uh, must take a, an amount of resource. And again, I emphasise when the council is spending 50% less on its roads uh, than what it was three years ago. Um, so I'm going to move uh, the officer's recommendation A and B and add a new C, noting that it is, that it is the aspirational objective of the state, New South Wales State Government to achieve net zero emissions by 2050 and its initiatives under the New England Renewable Zone, the General Manager prepare a discussion paper for its consideration on the relationships between Project 030, ARC Eco, and the Council's declaration of the environmental emergency to address community expectations, opportunities under the Government's power purchase agreements, the Council stewardship, for the ARC, a local government area. Legality of MOUs signed by former CEOs, that should be plural. Linkages to the Council strategic plan and budget impacts, bracket including direct and indirect costs, having regard to the Council's tenuous financial position. And I would declare that carried. Next item is uh, Geomeric Dam Recreation Facility, the exhibition. Uh, Mr Administrator, this report uh, goes to the results of the public exhibition on the proposed, on the uh, redevelopment of the Geomeric Dam Recreational Area. Uh, it considers factors such as additional car parking, um, the cost and scale of the commercial wastewater treatment plant seating and visual separation and uh, confirms that it will need um, approval under the Office of Local Government's Capital Expenditure Guidelines. Mm. Um, as I've discussed with you, I don't understand why the officer wants to put this back on exhibition uh, when it has been on exhibition. We've got a grant um, and we should be getting on with it. The community has indicated they're happy and I think, um, well, I, what I've tried to do uh, in I've rewritten the recommendation, uh, also trying to address representations made by the committee, uh, to, by, by the community on, on various aspects. I've spent a considerable amount of time on Jumeric Dam Recreation Facility because it's, it's an issue that was raised with me uh, by the suspended councillors and now some former councillors uh, when I first arrived here. Uh, and you know, the fact that the government is now giving us another grant, we don't want to lose another opportunity. Um, so I would move that Council A notes that options uh, for temporary overflow parking for one-off events will be incorporated into stage one of the upgrade plan or in later stages of the plan subject to budget uh, and the potential adverse effects on public amenity and environmental values. Two, seek advice and obtain specifications for a commercial on-site wastewater treatment system that can treat a minimum of 6,000 litres a day for incorporation to the project and authorise the general manager to include uh, the scope of works if the budget permits. C, endorse additional seating within the upgraded plan to accommodate parental supervision near the water's edge. D, delete the proposed kiosk cafe from stage one and incorporate a provision for a low impact food van option. E, uh, seek approval uh, as required under the Office of Local Government's Capital Expenditure Guidelines. F, note that project furniture will align with the Council's Park Furniture Guidelines. G, note that the project is to include beach sand replenishment and associated localised maintenance of weeds at the, at the beach area. H, 
not require the brief to include artist's impressions or a second round of community engagement. And I note that the project has had its implementation meeting and is proceeding to a planning workshop with, with Public Works Advisory Department Regional New South Wales and Council Officers in late January 2021 with the intention of the project commencing promptly. And I would declare that carried. Uh, item uh, 10.12, Development Application Approvals. Mr uh, Interim Administrator, this is an update on Council's progress in meeting the Public Spaces Legacy Program uh, KPIs, noting that the development application uh, approval time at the moment is 33 days and the complying development certificates is seven days and uh, that means we're meeting our target to, uh, to participate in the Legacy Program. Well, it's appropriate that we're meeting in Gaira uh, because a lot hinges for Gaira uh, on the Council meeting its targets. Uh, with Mother of Ducks uh, Lagoon and the walking track. Uh, so, you know, well done uh, to the staff. Um, if I could, in relation to item 10.12 on page 63 of the business paper, I move that the officer's recommendation be adopted and declare that carried. Um, item 10.13, the drought management plan 2020. Um, Mr. Min uh, Interim Administrator, uh, this is to seek council approval. Uh, to, put the, to put the attached draft drought management plan 2020 on public exhibition for 42 days for community consultation. Um, thank you very much. Look, this is a substantial work, and if you could convey to Aaron, um, I know that the accelerator's been pushed on this. this these are matters that should have been done uh, during administration, or the first round of administration. Um, and. You know, the council may not have got itself into some of the problems it did in relation uh, to water, you know, including, uh, you know, Mother of Ducks, which we can hear is a continuing problem. Um, so if you could convey uh, to the, um, the staff, uh, you know, the council's appreciation, and now it's the opportunity uh, for the community to have, have their say. Um, in relation uh, to item 10.3 on page 65 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation and declare that carried. Uh, item 10.4, Kempsey Road. Kempsey Road. Um, Mr Interim Administrator, this is um, uh, to outline that the road surface on Kempsey Road has again become rough, uneven and unsafe following the recent rainfall and flood events. There has been a natural disaster declaration, AGRN 936. To eliminate risk to road users, safety grading and resheeting works are necessary and an exemption is sought under the tender provision of the Local Government Act. Look, in relation to this matter, um, I should acknowledge uh, the local member and the Office of the Minister for Roads, um, who uh, certainly have transport for New South Wales working very, very closely with the council officers. Uh, and you know, that, that's, you know, I see that's a bit of a, a good outcome in my short time, uh, time here, that, that that's got me because it's certainly a big issue. Um, in relation to item 10.14 on page 70 of the business paper, uh, I'd move the officers' recommendation A and B and declare that carried. Uh, next item, 10.15, development related security policy. Mr Interim Administrator, the purpose of this report is to place the existing development-related security policy, Poll 065, on public exhibition. The purpose of the policy is to protect public infrastructure by requiring developers to lodge a bond or security to cover the cost of some of the activities related to their development and request to be put on public exhibition for 28 days. Uh, thank you. In relation to item 10.15 on page 72 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation A and B and declare that carried. Uh, next item is Armadale Courthouse, item 10.16. Uh, Mr Interim Administrator, this report responds to an opportunity provided by uh, Property New South Wales to acquire the former Armadale Courthouse at a discounted commercial value. There has been considerable uh, council and community support for the Armadale Courthouse to transfer 
to council ownership. Uh, the building is in poor condition and in response uh, it is proposed that uh, the council seek to acquire the property at a nominal value and also to seek funding from the state government to restore and repair the building. Uh, such a cost would be beyond the council's capacity. No, thank you. And Mr. Arnie, if I could acknowledge the considerable work you've put into this one, uh, noting what the, what the council and the community's views are, um, there's a long way to go um, with this, uh, but I would like to add an addition of D to the recommendation. So I'd move A, B and C and, and a new D authorise the general manager to make representations to the state member and funding authorities to negotiate the possible reallocation of the grant from the hydrotherapy centre towards the restoration of the former courthouse and sheriff's office should acquisition under B be successful. Now I'll declare that carried. And look, uh, it's going to take millions. Uh, the courthouse um, is not in a, in, in a good state, uh, but I think it's an important asset that uh, should come back uh, to this community. Um, so uh, couldn't be in better hands than Mr Rayner's. Um, item uh, 10.17, uh, Park Furniture Style Design Guide. Mr Administrator, submissions were received uh, when the draft Park Furniture Style and Design Guide was on public exhibition. The report notes that the key points in the submission and recommends no change and as such uh, the adoption of the proposed guides. I thank you. In relation to item 10.17 on page 78 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation and declare that carried. Um, next item. Um, is the removal of rail bridge at the McClellan Street Viaduct. Thank you, Mr Administrator. This comes to you at uh, your request to provide a report into the status of the rail bridge at the McClellan Street Viaduct, which is off Miller Street in Armidale, uh, and the report provides a history into the original council's recommendation to remove the bridge, uh, and the recommendations of the council note the history behind um, the recommendation to remove the rail bridge at the, at the viaduct in the context of uh, the proposed New England Rail Trail um, submission that was up last month. Yeah. Look, thank you uh, for this report. Um, in my view, the removal of this uh, viaduct at this stage would be extremely short-sighted, uh, having regard to the fact there's considerable movement in relation to the rail trail project. Um, so I'm going to move a, um, a different recommendation, to one of the officer's recommendation. Uh, I move that Council's decision of 25 July 2018 seeking the removal of the rail bridge at the McClellan Street Viaduct be rescinded. I declare that carried. Uh, next item is fixing of local roads program on page 84 of the business paper. Mr Administrator, this is requesting uh, adoption of the revised submission that will be going in the next a uh, couple of working days. That was the addition of a request for funding to do the remaining eight kilometre gravel section of Rockvale Road. Council is uh, right now undertaking 1.4 kilometres at the Guy Road end, leaving 7.8 kilometres. So we're putting, um, as I say, under the Fixing Local Roads program, a request for uh, $12 million to seal that final section. and. The report, report requests that uh, we delegate authority to the general manager to enter into the funding agreement subject to an offer being received and the general manager being satisfied that the terms and conditions of the agreement are of net benefit to council. Thank you. So, in effect, um, this is a rerun of the earlier application adding Rockvale Road. Uh, thank you. And Rockvale Road, that is an important linkage between Guyra and Armadale. Uh, in emergencies and when the um, pinch closed. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, in relation to item 10.19 on page 84 of the business paper, uh, I would move the officer's recommendation A and B and declare that carried. 
Um, next item is the draft library strategic plan, pay, uh, item 11.1. Thank you, Mr. Administrator. Um, uh, this comes to you um, uh, from our library manager who has put together the draft library strategic plan in consultation with the community. And the recommendation is that Council um, endorse the draft uh, plan and be placed on public exhibition. Thank you. In relation to item 11.1 on page 87 of the business paper, uh, I would move the officer's recommendation and declare that carried. Um, the next item um, is uh, the Sports Council discussion paper. Mr. Interim Administrator, this is seeking Council endorsement that the Armadale Regional Sports Council discussion paper be distributed for comment to key stakeholders within the Armadale sports community. Um, in relation to this one, um, it fails, in my view, to properly recognise Skyra um, and the, you know, the former Guyra Shire recreational assets. Um, so I'm going to move a, a, another recommendation uh, that A, the discussion paper be amended to incorporate and acknowledge the policies of the former Guyra Shire Council, to clarify references to the former Armadale Dumeric Council, and detail sponsorship of all public assets, the subject uh, of the paper, and to acknowledge uh, the report uh, review of council committees, which is presently on exhibition. Uh, B, subject to A, the acting general manager be authorised to place the paper on public exhibition, um, and I would declare that carried. Um, next item, uh, 11.3, uh, 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 community leasing policy. Uh, Mr Interim Administrator, Council recently uh, received a report on its property portfolio, which identified a number of uh, shortfalls in the way that Council managed its uh, many properties. <coughs> this report provides a draft community leasing policy document. It's aimed at uh, equity and consistency. Uh, it will uh, be effective through all of the Council's agreements, subject to uh, what comes from the public consultation and a further decision of the Council. So it is to propose to go on exhibition until late January. Certainly a lot of reading for residents <laughs> on exhibition at the moment. Yeah. Um, but these are all matters that should have been done during the merger process. Uh, in relation to um, item 11.3 on page 92 of the business paper, I would move the rec officer's recommendation A, B and C and declare that carried. Uh, the next item is financial support for community groups on item 11.4. Thank you, Mr Interim Administrator. This report seeks approval to pay the New England Conservatorium of Music, NECOM, 100% of their requested 2021 contribution and provides information on the MOU that's in place and details their 2019-20 financial acquittal report. Um, this is one of the MOUs that I'm concerned about. Um, I, I've looked and looked and I can't find a reference uh, back to a council decision. Um, so in relation to this matter, I'm not going to support the recommendation. Um, I move that council adhere to its decision of 23 September 2020, noting that an independent consultant has been retained to address the matters raised in the resolution of 19 August in relation to partnership agreements. And I'll declare that carried. Uh, next item is item 14.1, uh, the um, minutes of the traffic committee of 1 December. Thank you, Mr Administrator. This is to note the minutes of the traffic advisory committee meeting held on the 1st of December 2020 and one of the uh, notable recommendations was to authorise the General Manager and Mayor jointly to change the restrictions on Kempsey Road to allow vehicles up to 8.8 .8 metre in length and 12 tonne GVM, subject to the advice of the GR Technical Report and its endorsement by the committee. Uh, thank you. And I think another one of, of equal uh, relevance is H, uh, that a report uh, be received on the opening of Traffic Committee to the public uh, in my view, uh, it should be open to the public 
and the agendas uh, should be um, publicly available uh, on the, you know, at least three or four days before the meeting. Uh, in relation to item 14.1 on page 96 of the business paper, uh, I would move the officer's recommendation A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H to be adopted and declare that carried. Um, look, we have a, a number of matters um, of which were considered by the general, acting general manager uh, to, be avert, to be urgent, um, particularly in relation to the fact this is going to be the last council meeting of the year, or ordinary council meeting of the year. Um, then no doubt there will be a meeting uh, sometime next week for the council to elect a mayor, um, but this will be the last ordinary meeting. So I would move, pursuant to clause 9.3 of the Code of Meeting, meeting Practice, um, that the late items uh, 8.7 community strategic plan 9.4 former war memorial library building the possible lease to the university item 9.5 updated financial statements for the year ended to the 30th, 30th of June and that replaces the matter that the acting general manager withdrew item 10.20 New South Wales Crown lands approval uh, for a road transfer at Spring Hill Lane. Item 10.21, your High Street Program grant submission. Item 10.22, gate and stock grid on public roads policy. Item 11.5, small business relief grants. Be considered at this meeting and ruled to be matters of great urgency, uh, noting uh, that public notice of same was given on the 9th of December, even though it's only today, um, the, uh, the matters have just got to get moving. Uh, I, I declare that carried. So we now move to um, the, in effect, the supplementary agenda. Uh, the first item is Community Strategic Plan uh, 2017. Uh, 27, uh, item 8.17 on the business paper. Thank you, Mr Interim Administrator. As part of the process for consideration of the special rate variation, Council's integrated planning and reporting documents must be updated and include reference to the proposed SRV. The Community Strategic Plan now includes reference to the SRV. The delivery program has been extensively updated to include the required information as recommended by IPART and the resourcing strategy has been updated to include financial modelling results on the SRV scenarios. The report proposes to put these documents on public consultation for a period of 28 days so that the requirement is satisfied. Uh, thank you. In relation to item 8.7 on page 3 of the supplementary agenda, I would move the officer's recommendation A, B and C and declare that carried. Um, Item 9.4, uh, the former War Memorial Library building. Thank you, Mr Interim Administrator. The purpose of this report is to seek approval to authorise a general manager to negotiate an agreement between Council and the University of New England Smart Region Incubator for the lease of 124 Faulkner Street, which is the um, previously known as the Armidale War Memorial Library and accordingly to provide a concession within the terms of the lease which takes into account the investment by the university in council's asset and to proceed with the lease in accordance with the requirements of the Local Government Act. Um, I support this, but I haven't had a chance to talk to anybody about it. Can I just ask, I'm not going to be here obviously, uh, that some consideration be given when you are looking at rentals uh, to recoup some of the money uh, that the council spent originally on the site that was uh, unbudgeted for. Um, but this, it's only just a request that I'm not going to put in the recommendation. It's just if you can try and uh, claw back some of that money. Um, anyhow, I've got different. I won't say what my real views on that is. Um, in relation to uh, item A, B. I move the officer's recommendation A, B and C and add a D 
uh, noting that any lease will require the approval of the financial controller, whether the subject of council resolution or delegation. And I declare that carried. Um, item 9.5, uh, updated financial statements. Thank you, Mr. Interim Administrator. The report provides an updated set of draft financial statements for the year ending 30 June 2020 for sign off by Council, the Acting General Manager, and the Responsible Accounting Officer. It was deemed necessary given the operating result has materially changed since the first set of draft accounts was authorised by Council on the 23rd of September. The reasons for the changes vary, but they do include recognition of non cash contributions in the form of Crown land and rural fire service assets and reclassification of the non-cash loss resulting from the Tinga boundary adjustment. The draft, set financial, the draft financial statements are now with the New South Wales Audit Office for their final review, and we do expect the final audit report to be issued later this month. Uh, once the audit report's issued by the New South Wales Audit Office, the final set of financial statements and the Audit Office's report will be adopted by Council next year. Um, will when they're finalised and, and before adoption by the Council, will either the Audit Office or the auditors who they delegate to uh, come to a meeting so they can be um, questioned, in effect, uh, by the councillors and the general manager in public? Uh, yes, so under the provisions of the Act, the, there will be a representative from the New South Wales Audit Office attending the Council meeting where the final set of financial statements are adopted along with the report. And I'm assuming that that will continue as normal and not be impacted by COVID. But um, if, if there are restrictions in relation to that, it could be that they send a delegate, but somebody will attend. Thank you. Um, in relation to item 9.5 on page 9 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation A, B and C and declare that carried. Um, uh, item um, 10.20. Uh, Spring Hill Lane. Thank you, Mr. Interim Administrator. This report notes that New South Wales Crown Lands <coughs> has transferred Spring Hill Lane, South Armadale, to Armadale Regional Council. The report also acknowledges the strong community appeal to retain Spring Hill Lane for amenity and biodiversity protection. Uh, thank you. Look, this is a good news story. Um, Mr. Rayner and myself, I think, was probably your first on-site inspection uh, amongst the kangaroos. <laughs> um, I understand that part of, is it a state or federal grant? Uh, that was federal, yeah, part I'm of, fairly sure. Part of a federal grant uh, will also be spent $15,000 uh, on a koala um, access. Could you, would you mind just explaining? Yep. Um, for, for, the, for the meeting, uh, as the administrator has identified, $30,000 has been allocated from uh, grant funding uh, to a range of koala um, uh, uh, protection measures and one of those was to put $10,000 towards the um, re-vegetation and uh, reintroducing koala feed trees at Spring Hill. Our staff park have, um, have amended that to $15,000 worth of work so this will provide connectivity, safer koala travel routes uh, Revegetate, as I said, introduce koala uh, trees and reconnect um, South Armadale to the Lin Lin Land Park area. Thank you. And the, the, they were matters that were raised by residents when we met them on site. It was a, it's a missing link, uh, apparently. Um, well, can I move a C? Um, uh, that council note the intention to expend $15,000 of federal grant money on the, what are they called? Spring Hill Lane, oh, koala no. uh, feed, tr feed tree revegetation. Yeah. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll just adjourn the meeting for a few minutes until people have had their fun. Uh, so I'll, I'll adjourn till five past five.
call Friday the 26th, whichever. Call the, the meeting to order each. If I could call the meeting to order again, and I apologise, but it was easier just to adjourn for five minutes. Um, in relation to um, item 10.20, uh, Spring Hill Lane, um, I would move the officer's recommendation A and B, and C will be uh, that council notes that there will be $15,000 expended uh, on koala feed tree revegetation. This will improve diversity, uh, wildlife corridors, and support the protection of koalas, and we'll declare that carried. Uh, the next item uh, is your high street program, uh, point, point, item 10.21. Thank you, Mr. Interim Administrator. This seeks council approval to put in a grant application uh, under the newly released New South Wales Government's Your High Street Program, managed by the New South Wales DPIE, and recommends a bit to fund improvements to Bradley Street, Gyra. Uh, thank you. In relation to um, item uh, 10.21 on page 15 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation and declare that carried. Uh, item 10.22, uh, gate and stock grid on public roads policy. Thank you, Mr. Interim Administrator. This seeks approval to put on public exhibition the draft policy on gates and stock grids on public lands uh, from a period of 10th of December to the 27th of January. And the, uh, the basis of this is there's two policies at the moment one from the former Gaura Shire Council and one uh, from the former Armadale Jumeric Council that are in conflict. Another matter that should have been dealt with much, much earlier. Um, in relation to this matter, I would make a slight amendment. Um, I would move the officer's recommendation... Sorry, in relation to item 10.22 on page 17 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation but extending the exhibition period to the 1st of March. Declare that carried. Uh, next item is small business relief grants. Thank you, Mr. Administrator. Um, the purpose of this uh, report is to advise uh, the recommended applicants for the receipt of the small business relief grants for a $2,000 cash grant uh, that have been selected by both independent and ARC uh, panel members. And with the recommendation, the Council approve the recommended applicants provided in this report for the small business relief grant and that the remaining funds allocated to this program be reallocated to projects as determined by the General Manager that meet the goals of the grants program being to support uh, economic stimulus and social uh, positivity post the bushfires. Uh, thank you. In relation to item 10.15 on page 20 of the business paper, uh, I would move the officer's recommendation A and B and declare that carried. Is there any further general business? Yeah. Um, I have a, um, a interim administrator minute or a community update, uh, which I would like to give. Um, yeah, in my first minute to council on June, in June, I stated that residents could be assured that I would do my best to independently serve in an honest, open and transparent way, ensuring all voices are heard. I can report that I am confident that this culture is now being embedded in the day-to-day -day administrative operations of the Armidale Regional Council. When I took on the role, I had no idea of the level of toxicity between elected members and elected members and senior staff and the dysfunction, and that the dysfunction had in effect cascaded, resulting in processes and procedures of the administration in some areas collapsing. Nor did I appreciate the tenuous state of the Council's finances and the now proven financial ineptitude of the newly merged Council in its, in its early years. Add to all this the complexity of the fact that in many areas, harmonisation of Council services and policies following the 2016 merger were still to be completed. It was my observation that both elected and it was my observation at both the elected and staff levels 
that there were far too many personal agendas at the expense of the community and that the Council was not operating in accordance with its statutory obligations. While I do not propose to name individuals who have assisted me uh, uh, in the fresh and back to basics start for the Council, the work of the Acting General Manager David Kerr, who laid some initial foundations, and the Acting General Manager Mr John Rayner in leading the recovery in both identifying and addressing administrative shortcomings and failures must be acknowledged. Obviously, they have been supported by a core by core people in the organisation with a fresh outlook that focuses on added transparency and community engagement. I do not propose to outline the key achievements, as in reality they are still a work in progress, but would simply refer interested residents to the content of council meeting agendas, a massive turnaround in such a short period. To all of you I say well done. Uh, but the rebuild has just started and many more tough decisions and recommendations to the elected body are going to have to be made by the incoming general manager. I would be, it would be remiss of me not to make some observations on the recently completed consultation on the special rate variation. I sat through a few of the very professional staff presentations but still do not understand why the council left it so late when they knew that the 10% temporary levy finishes on the 30th of June next year. I have read, read a number of the submissions and heard first-hand the views of many people and in my view the status quo should remain and Council needs to get its own house in order. A complete review of levels of service that needs to be undertaken to see if residents are in fact getting value for money and the back-to-back -back regime commenced by Mr Rayner, given time to be embedded. In short, councils and staff need to focus on core responsibilities, and I hope I have played my part in that regard. The decision of the Minister for Local Government of placing a performance improvement order on the council will go a long way to having councillors only focus on their statutory responsibilities and the community should applaud the appointment of Mr Rayner as both the temporary advisor and financial controller until September 2021 elections. His acknowledged local government reputation and track record in the past few months at Armidale Regional Council speak for themselves. I continue to be contacted by suspended councillors questioning some of my public statements and I have been very careful not to point the finger at any individuals in what has been a most unfortunate time for the Armidale Regional Council community. In my view, blame can, in my view, you cannot blame anybody but everybody. To those councillors I simply say, you have a second chance before you face the electors in September 2021. It's been a privilege for me to serve as an interim administrator and to experience being in such a wonderful part of our nation in the New England district. I thank those residents who have made me feel very welcome while undertaking what many see as a thankless task. Uh, I've done my best and I wish you all well for the future. Um, with that, I move that the minute be noted, declare it carried and close the meeting. Thank you.